All right, welcome back to our unit here on the mole. Today's topic is molecular and empirical formulas. Okay, lesson three of four. Your objectives are as follows. Today you'll understand the difference between molecular and empirical formulas. Okay, hopefully you'll learn how to calculate empirical formulas given percent composition. And you'll learn how to calculate molecular formulas when given the molar mass of the empirical formula. Okay, as always, feel free to pause this video anytime you feel necessary. For your quick write, a little review here. In the compound iron oxide, Fe2O3, how many iron atoms are present? How many oxygen atoms are present? Okay. How do you think scientists determine the subscripts on chemical formulas such as Fe2O3? In other words, how do they come up with the chemical formula in a lab for the chemical compound Fe2O3? Okay, and then can hydrogen peroxide here, H2O2, be simplified into a more basic chemical formula? If so, how? All right, go ahead and pause this while you do your quick write. I'm going to move on here. So, empirical formulas. The empirical formula for a compound is determined experimentally or in a lab. Okay, the empirical formula represents the smallest whole number mole ratio of the different atoms in the compound. In other words, it is the simplest formula for a compound. For example, consider hydrogen peroxide here, H2O2. All right, simplified down to its smallest whole number ratio, okay, hydrogen peroxide becomes HO. So the ratio two to two becomes one to one. All right, therefore the empirical formula for hydrogen peroxide is HO, okay. So, a molecular formula is a formula based on the actual numbers of atoms in a compound. So, for the molecular formulas here, for hydrogen peroxide, it's H2O2. Okay. For glucose here, C6H12O6. Okay. So, in this compound has one carbon, three hydrogen, one oxygen, two carbon, four hydrogen, and two oxygen atoms. But the empirical formula is a formula that gives the simplest whole number ratio of the atoms of each element in a compound, remember. So the empirical formula here for peroxide here, H2O2, is HO. Okay, for C6H12O6, the empirical formula is CH2O. Okay, and here, notice they're the same. It can't be simplified any lower. So it's the same, all right? And C2H4O2 becomes CH2O, okay? So for your notes, what is an empirical formula? Question on the left-hand side, answer and examples go on the right-hand side. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm gonna move on here. Okay, so practice. Write the empirical formula for N2O4 for C4H12 and for H2O. Go ahead and pause this while you work on these. When you're ready to see the answers, hit play. Okay, so N2O4, the empirical formula is NO2, okay? And C4H12 becomes CH3, okay? And finally, water here, well, it's the same. It can't be simplified any further. All right, so steps for calculating empirical formulas. Here's where you need to listen. When calculating the empirical formula for a compound or molecule, there are certain steps you need to follow. Okay, so let's, here's a problem here. Find the empirical formula for a compound made up of 40.1% carbon, 6.7% hydrogen, and 53.2% oxygen by mass. Okay, so let's follow our steps here. Step one, assume a 100 gram sample when given percent. So 40.1% simply becomes 40.1 grams. 6.7% hydrogen simply becomes 6.7 grams of hydrogen. And 53.2% oxygen once again becomes 53.2 grams of oxygen, okay? So step two, convert grams into moles, all right? So, one mole of carbon, according to our periodic table, has a mass of 12.01 grams of carbon, okay? 
that gives us 3.34 moles of carbon. Okay, 6.7 grams of hydrogen. We know one mole of hydrogen, according to our periodic table, has a molar mass of 1.01 grams of hydrogen, which gives us 6.63 moles of hydrogen. Okay, moving on to oxygen here, 53.2 grams of oxygen. Well, one mole of oxygen has a molar mass of 16.00 grams of oxygen, according to our periodic table. This gives us 3.33 moles of oxygen. Okay, so we've finished step two here. We've solved for moles. Now, step three, divide all the moles by the smallest number of moles here. Well, which one of these is the smallest? 3.33. So, divide them all by the smallest number of moles. Okay, and in doing so, we get one mole of carbon, 1.9 moles of hydrogen, and one mole of oxygen here. Okay, it's important to realize that 1.9, we need to round to the nearest whole number, which simply becomes two. Okay, and then we can move on to step four here, write the empirical formula. So we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in our chemical formula. Okay, well, that one goes to carbon, and this two for hydrogen goes to two for hydrogen, and one goes to oxygen here. All right, so the empirical formula is CH2O. All right, and that's how you calculate them. All right, so for your notes, what are the steps for calculating empirical formulas? Question on the left-hand side, answer here goes on the right-hand side. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you work. I'm going to move on. All right, so practice. Determine the empirical formula for a compound composed of 36.11% calcium and 63.89% chlorine by mass. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you work on this problem. When you're ready to check your work, okay, go ahead and hit play. Okay. So let's see how you did. Step one, assume a 100 gram sample when given percent. So 36.11% becomes 36.11 grams of calcium and 63.89% becomes 63.89 grams of chlorine, okay? Step two, convert grams into moles for each element. Okay, well, according to our periodic table, one mole of calcium has a molar mass of 40.08 grams calcium, okay? Which gives us 0 0.009 moles of calcium. And for chlorine, we know that one mole of chlorine, all right, has a molar mass of 35.45 grams of chlorine, which gives us 1.082 moles of chlorine. Okay, step three, which one of these is smaller now? Okay, divide all the moles by the smallest number of moles. In this case, it's 0.9009. We get one mole of calcium and two moles of chlorine. Okay. Step four, now we can just write the empirical formula, okay? CaCl here, okay, and that one goes there. Two moles of chlorine go there, and we can write the formula as calcium chloride, CaCl2, okay? All right, so hope you did well on that. All right, so molecular formulas, moving away from empirical formulas now. So a molecular formula is based on the actual numbers of atoms in each type of compound or molecule. For example, consider glucose here or sugar. Okay, just looking at it, the molecular formula tells us that it has six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms. So it has the actual number of atoms in it. Okay, so for your notes, what is a molecular formula? Question on the left-hand side. Answer goes on the right-hand side. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right. So just like empirical formulas, there are steps for calculating molecular formulas. Okay. So find the molecular formula for a compound with an empirical formula of CH4N if the molar mass of the molecule is 60.12 grams per mole. Okay. So step one. Find the molar mass of the empirical formula. Okay, well, the empirical formula is right here. The molar mass of the empirical formula is, okay, 
1 times 12 is 12. 4 times, okay, 1 is 4.0, and nitrogen is 14. Okay, this gives us the molar mass of the empirical formula as 30 grams per mole. Okay, step 2. Divide the molar mass of the molecule given in the problem by the molar mass of the empirical formula. Okay, so the molar mass of the molecule given in the problem here divided by the molar mass of the empirical formula. Okay, this gives us, okay, 60.12 grams per mole divided by 30 grams per mole, okay, which gives us 2, okay. Round it to the nearest whole number. Step three, multiply your answer from step two by the subscripts given in the empirical formula. So here's our empirical formula. Okay, multiply it by two. Okay, multiply the subscripts. So if you multiply one here by two, we get two carbon. Four times two is eight. And 1 times 2 is 2. So C2H8N2. Therefore, the molecular formula is C2H8N2. Okay? So, for your notes, what are the steps for calculating molecular formulas? Question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right, so practice. Determine the molecular formula of a compound with an empirical formula of NH2 and a molecular or molar mass of 32.06 grams per mole. Okay? Go ahead and pause this while you work on this. When you're ready to see the answers, uh, hit play. All right, let's see how you did. So step one, find the molar mass of the empirical formula. Okay, this gives us 16. All right. Okay, one nitrogen, two hydrogen. 14 plus 2, 16. Step 2, divide the molar mass of the molecule given in the problem by the molar mass of the empirical formula. Okay. This gives us 32.06 divided by 16. Gives us 2. Okay. Multiply your answer from step 2 by the subscripts given in the empirical formula. Okay. So multiply that by 2, which gives us, okay, N2H4. Okay. Hopefully you got that right. All right, so for your summary, okay, go ahead and answer some of these questions, okay, fill up that summary box, you can always write your own, all right, so we'll see you next time for lesson four.